Welcome to another episode of the Nashville Scoop. I'm Chris McKenna. I'm Craig Candage. And this week, it's kind of a follow-up of a past episode that we just did a couple, probably a couple weeks ago now, um, when we went to Milk and Honey, we did Biscuit Love. And same same area, it's in the Gulch on 11th, uh, as Milk and Honey was. but uh, On the other side of the wing mural. Yes. So, um, but yeah, we thought that we had to do a little bit of a follow up from that last one. And, uh, I know this is one of your favorites. You've been looking forward to doing this one since we talked about doing a podcast. So I, I have just because when we first started, uh, you know, traveling here and vacation here, we looked at all the tourist articles, um, you know, and all the top 10 lists and things and biscuit love was number one for breakfast on every single list. So I'm like, obviously it's delicious. So we was it one go. of the first ones that you tried? It was the first. It you, was. Did the you very make first sure? Thing. Yeah. So you made sure that, like, one of the first times you were down here, you were like, "All right, breakfast place. We're going here because it's number one." The very first time that we came here, um, we stayed in the Gulch, kind of like an industrial loft, really cool spot, mm-hmm. um, and it was about two hundred feet from Biscuit Love, and so we were like, we well, got here the it. next day, immediately went there for breakfast. So first impressions then now we can get into it first impression waiting, then so first <laughs> yeah so the first time you went what would you think after you left you don't have to like get into like everything that you had and stuff but like you know what like what did you how did you leave there feeling i was already pissed off when i walked <laughs> in because i waited in line with about 70 other people did you know that there was going to be a line ahead of time i figured because of the tourist list uh that there probably would be a little bit of a line like there is in most places here right I didn't think it was going to be that long, and I didn't think it was going to be that long of a wait in the right. line. Um, breakfast is usually fairly quick for people. Mm-hmm. Um, so the line immediately put me in a bad mood. I'm impatient. So that that, that right away, you know, um, not, not on my good side. Okay. We get in, um, select menu. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they have – Yeah, it's not a huge menu. Not a huge menu, but they have a lot of different things. Right. Um, for what they have, it's not a lot of repeats. So – I ordered, I think, the first time a hot chicken and biscuit, um, you know, sandwich. Okay. And the one thing that struck me that is also another pet peeve of mine with the restaurants is they essentially, you order right when you walk in and they give you a number and it's go find a table. Right. And so we ended up outside. It was a gorgeous day that day. They got a little, uh, like, garden area out, outside. Mm-hmm. There's some apartments and some other things right there. So... They kind of share it with them, but really, actually really nice outdoor patio. Yep. Um, they brought out our food. It was fairly quick, you know, yeah. five to seven minutes, which, you know, that's fast. I don't care where you sure. are. Um, not happy with the it was all down quality of the yeah. food, though. Yeah. So, um, you know, that day, it, I'm, we're going to go off of what we just did, sure. reviews and stuff, but that in particular day, I left there not liking just wondering like how could this be rated well that's when top. i started looking into how do restaurants get on these lists and that's right. what i found out you know a lot of these are just people writing articles off about other articles mm-hmm. or you know these restaurants paying to be yeah i think it depends sometimes yeah it's it's almost like a like a paid advertisement you can pay like i mean realtors can do the same thing absolutely too, you know it's yeah. like you can put out like your own like advertisement, your own like booklet and things like that. And it looks like, you know, this place wrote uh, a thing about you and it's really just you writing a thing about you. And then, you know, so they may have interviewed there, you, so. but you still had to cut a check for like $500. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, with that being said, we're not sure exactly what they did and like how this place. We don't know. I mean, top. this could have been someone that actually went there. I mean, at this point, I'm assuming they don't need to do anything like that because no. now their name's out there. So, I mean, now it's just it's a it's its own thing. So. They're slowly dropping in the ratings okay. um, just as there's been a lot of other really good restaurants come through. And it's always like, what's you know, who's the new cat in town? Sure. You know. Um, so we went today. Yep. Um, and so I haven't been, this is, this is my first time here. Yes. Um, so I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting a line, uh, just reading up on it beforehand, you know, the, saying like what the busy days were and stuff like that. And like we had talked about when we went to milk and honey too, like we went early. So, um, you know, not really at the busy time of the day. Uh, so we, we were, the first ones in line outside. So we were probably like fifth in line. And this and was right at nine o'clock. Right at nine a.m. Yeah. So, and, and we only waited like maybe three, four minutes. Yeah, it wasn't bad. like that. Yeah. So we did get right in. So I have no complaints there at all. 
Um, again, going off of the past episode with the Gulch area, it, it was easy parking, easy to get to, nice area. Clean, good know, area. Like yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we walked up and just like you were, uh, you were just saying, you know, you walk up to the register, you put your order in and they give you a number mm -hmm. this time. I know you said they tell you to go, they had told you to go find a table before they actually asked us if we wanted to sit at this certain table and right. they let us there and, and put our number on the table. And yeah, we got our food really fast. It was less than five minutes. I feel like it was Five yeah, it was, it was probably five or seven minutes. Yeah, they did have was, one of my favorite quick. apple juices, the, the Martinelli glass bottle. So I was I was pretty excited about that. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I mean, better than, better than milk and honey that I had to drink water. So <laughs> because a breakfast place that doesn't carry apple juice, I I, just, I don't understand still. But um, still baffled. But me. yeah, so no, the apple juice was great. Uh, it, it was like you said, individually bottled. You know, it wasn't like your like soda vending machine type right. apple juice from concentrate you and, know what and I mean? they it was did a, it was a good fresh apple. and they did have kind of water jugs around yep um where you could go in and help yourself to water which is actually really convenient um mm -hmm. with how many people come through these restaurants and you can just kind of help yourself um the so, one so as your introduction to biscuit love um and when we left it was the same there was a line this line, I think, was, was only a little about, bit longer when we left. That was only about no, 12 people, 10 yeah. or 12, which isn't bad. Usually it, it can get up into the 70 to 100 range. Um, and you will be waiting, you know, half hour to an hour and a half to get right. in. Um, the one thing when you walk in, you're greeted by all their um, everything they're trying to sell you. So Biscuit Love T-shirts, mm -hmm. you know, keychains, whatever they have. You know, they're trying to sell you everything right away. You got the menu. You kind of wait in a little bit of a line, go in a horseshoe, and then you go order. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's set up fine. I mean, it, it went smooth. So yeah. I had no complaints at all um, throughout that whole process, um, sitting, getting it ordered. Everything was fast. I mean, from the time that we got there until the time we sat, um, it was less than 10 minutes. So yeah. I mean, uh, the line for me flew by. I was talking to a young couple with a baby from Florida yep. who were just here for a couple of days for and they want to move here. an event. And they want to move here. You got a future client. Yeah. A after being here for like, I think they were here two days and yes. they want to move. Yeah. Well, you can't blame them. Yeah. So, um, all right. So what did we, what did we get into while we were there? what did you get? So I got, so I asked her, I said, what's the most popular thing on the menu? Mm -hmm. Like what, what does most people order? Um, and I, you know, go into a place like this, I think you get a go for that. Yeah, um, absolutely. So what I got is called the, uh, it's called the East nasty. It's a buttermilk biscuit, fried boneless chicken thigh, aged cheddar and a sausage gravy. Okay. Um, and I got an apple juice. Yes. What do you think? I think that the apple juice was the best part was of the, the meal. Best part of the meal. All right. Um, tear, it, tear it apart, man. What, <laughs> what do you got? So I'm, I'm, being here and, and being able to get a really good biscuit in just about any place, if your name's Biscuit Love, you should have a good biscuit. You didn't like the biscuit. This is probably one of the worst ones I've had in the city or anywhere in this general middle Tennessee area. Um, wow. It was square, which is fine. I don't care about the, the shape of the biscuit. Okay. But it was incredibly hard. Okay. And it was even the middle or just the even uh, the middle. OK, um, it was more of a croissant than I would call it a biscuit. OK, and I'm sure that they you know, everyone has their own way of doing things. Right. And this just happens to be theirs. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest complaint with this, I can get around the biscuit. My biggest complaint with it was the quality of the chicken. Yeah. The chicken. um one of my biggest pet peeves with chicken is when you go to the store, you cook up a nice chicken and it's got a real bad consistency to yeah. it. Um, real chewy. Sure. Kind of. Yeah, it is the worst. Just weird. Yeah. It turns you off from immediately. It. Immediately. Yes. And this chicken for me was, was that right away from the first bite and the, uh, the breading, which actually was, was pretty good on it. Yeah. Was just falling off. Even pieces I hadn't touched. It was already falling off. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the, the consistency of the chicken can completely change how you feel about an entire place, yeah. you know? So, like, we were talking about this before, and, you know, one of my favorite restaurants back in Boston, uh, we would go to this Italian restaurant, and I loved it, loved their sauce and everything, and I would always get, like, the chicken parm, and we went in one time, super rubbery, just gross tasting chicken and you know the first time is like all right you know they had a bad day because i had eaten there eaten that before right um so you think okay had a bad day um went back tried it again same thing and not only did i not get that there 
I stop going to the restaurant because it's like if they cook, if, if they're cooking things like that, you know, and it tastes that way, um, what else are they cooking poorly? You right. know, what else, what, what else is bad about the place that you don't know and that you haven't tried? And so like, still, why I keep I going back. I don't know if that's a, how they're cooking it or if right. that's like the it chicken could, that they're buying. I know nowadays, that, you know, both. especially in the United States, they pump so much into the food that we eat right. that you, who knows if it's hormones they're pumping into it, if it's, you know, yeah. what it is, but it could just be, you know, and again, you know, this is the first time you got the rubbery thing, you know, the taste at this place. Right. So benefit of the doubt, kind of like what I did back home, you know, it's like you could go maybe one more time it, the next time. I don't know that you'll ever go back anyway, but if you were to go back, I would say, try it again. Um, and just see if, if that's how they do it or if it was just, you know, one time. So, and I don't remember the chicken consistency being that way before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So maybe it was just one, yeah, one time. Uh, hopefully I will yeah. say one thing though. The sausage gravy was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big sausage guy. <laughs> breakfast sausage. I don't, I, I right. love like a hot Italian sausage. Yeah. Not a, a big breakfast sausage guy, but the consistency of the gravy, it was, it was a kind of a white gray gravy. Yep. Um, had a really, really good, if you like it, breakfast sausage. Think like Jimmy Dean breakfast right. sausage flavor to it. And okay. the consistency on it was, it was, it was actually probably perfect. Okay. Um, and I got a poached egg cause I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the poached egg was actually cooked perfect as well. Oh, that's good. Um, so I, is that it? Did you have anything else? Uh, no, that was it. Yeah, I thought that was it. I wasn't trying to interrupt you. Um, so what I got was, it was called the Lily. Okay, so I went completely different route than you went. All right, basically I had I had dessert for breakfast. It looked like dessert. It, it looked was, real good. I, I don't, so when we said, when we got all of our food delivered, uh, the people, so the tables, all right, so. I was actually kind of really pissed that I, I didn't see that on the menu. <laughs> because it looked so good. Well, it didn't matter. You asked. You asked I wanted your, the most popular thing yeah, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was funny when we when we did first sit down. So again, we had talked about this um, in the last breakfast review that we did at Milk and Honey about like you know how are the tables set up and things right. like that. Well, we were crammed in to like a very very small area. Mm-hmm. Like we, I could reach out and touch the neighbors on on both sides of us if we wanted to. When we went in and when we left, you, in your head you had to think nuts or butts. Like, what's my neighbor getting nuts <laughs> yeah. or butts? Okay. I, and I think I that every time it. I'm squeezing in between tables, right. I said, excuse yes. me. Um, but one, one table got butts, one yeah. table got nuts. Yeah. It's just <laughs> equal opportunity. I yeah, guess. exactly. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so threw me off. the tables are very, very close. Um, yeah, they were. And they do. Everyone basically picks their own table. They do have a big bar in the middle. Yeah, um, that nobody, had nobody plenty of open seats. Yeah. yeah, no one was there. So with the tables that close, I noticed that when when we got our food uh, dropped off, the people on both sides of us at the time were staring at both of our our meals. Oh and yeah. W- what's weird about that to me is that both sides of us had already finished their meal, so they had already gotten their food. They had seen their food, seen the presentation, and everything like that. But I don't know if they were looking at mine, looking at yours. I have no idea. But, I mean, it, it seemed like pretty normal stuff that we were getting, but everybody was super pumped for us. I didn't <laughs> notice what they got or if they had yeah. already finished or what. I, I think both tables were just finishing up. Yeah, but both, both of them were like, oh, gosh, yeah. look at oh, that. Look at that. And I'm like, all right. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was – it had to have been Present, mine. The presentation right on both now, were phenomenal. So you, you might not want to hear this, but I loved mine. I bet you it did. It was great. <laughs> So uh, the lily, uh, biscuit, French toast topped with house syrup, strawberries, and whipped cream. And yeah, it's exactly like what I said. It was dessert for breakfast. It was fantastic. The whole thing was. Um, you you said you had what the square square biscuits. Yep. So these come as uh, the round biscuits and completely soft throughout. This thing is just caked with syrup and whipped cream and just everything sugar and fantastic i mean so, it looked like dessert oh yeah it was great I, can, I can't eat for two days now i'm pretty sure like uh i probably ate three days worth of, of calories all in one <laughs> one sitting but um and i felt like that as well like it so, felt heavy oh yeah yeah mine did too yeah very very heavy. i mean i didn't eat my entirety but right what and, i did eat felt very heavy. felt heavy yeah 
I mean, it was a couple hours ago. We we just came from there this morning. A couple hours ago, I have no chance of eating until like maybe seven or eight tonight. Like another Same. six, seven hours from now. So, um, but it was heavy, but it it, it did taste great. It, I have nothing bad to say about it. Um, the entire experience for me, uh, I, again, you had been here before. You you kind of came into this, you know, thinking one way. I know you said you were going to be open minded, and you didn't like it again, which is fine. My experience. From beginning to end, I mean, I liked it a lot. Um, there was no weight, which obviously helped. Mm -hmm. So um, that that definitely um, could have swayed me a little bit. But, I mean, everything today was completely fine. Uh, the only thing that I would say, the complaint, is how expensive this place is. Yeah. We we got those those two things in an apple juice, and it was almost 40 bucks. Like, yeah. For yeah. breakfast? That's insane. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, it was it was ten dollars more than milk and honey. Yeah, and milk and honey. I feel like we got more. Was a much healthier breakfast, <laughs> much, and it was. It was I felt like we got more. I could eat lunch after I ate breakfast at right. milk and honey. I'm not going to eat lunch today. Yeah, so um, healthier for sure. But I mean, even like, I don't know. I, I just feel like for what we got, you you're more paying for their reputation and their name at this point. Now. Absolutely. Um, so not saying that my food wasn't good it was good but to pay for two people to to pay 40 bucks for breakfast is to me that's crazy i mean yeah i would i it was great i might do it again like maybe if people come and visit and it's like mm -hmm. and i'm sure that's what most people do at this point anyway um but did you, know, you notice all the suitcases visit, in there it. too oh yeah i mean a lot that's, of people are this is their last day in town so, so they bring their suitcases right. around town all with them. They're so there was, a, there was one corner that had probably 12 suitcases in right. it. Right. Yeah. Everybody's checking out of their places. They're like, all right, let's go grab breakfast and get out of here. We'll go to the airport. So, exactly. Um, so with that being said, what was your – we'll let you do the rating first this time. So what I give I – I think I gave milk – I'm going to like try and like, you know, do them together um, comparing. So I think I gave them a seven. You did. All right, so food-wise, I like their food better. I do. I like Biscuit Love's food better than I like Milk and Honey's. Um, if I remember, the the omelet that I had at Milk and Honey's was good, but it was um, pretty plain. It was it was plain, flat, and flat, thin. Um, but here, I mean, I have no complaint about the food. Yours looked really good. I know you didn't like it as much as I liked mine, but. Um, Food wise, I would, I would, I'd give them an eight, which I gave, I gave eight, milk and eight honey, I think a seven. Yeah. yeah. So as far as the food itself goes, I would give them an eight. Uh, the fact that it, you know, was very, very expensive, um, for what we got, even though it was good. I mean, it dropped, I drop the overall experience because I didn't have to wait in line. I just drop it like half a point, give it like seven and a half. You know, yeah. I have no problem paying for a great breakfast, you know, if it's a little bit expensive and you're in downtown, you know, it's, if it's delicious, fine. I'll pay whatever it takes. But overall, I mean, 40 bucks for just two people to eat breakfast. I just think that that's, that's overpriced. Yeah. yeah. And like, I there mean, better be something very, very special about it. Keep in me. mind. So a lot of that is location, right? You know, you're, pay you're paying for the fact that they are, you know, number one on the tour spot for breakfast. Well, that's what you're I was also saying. paying yeah. for the fact that they're in the Gulch near Broadway. Yeah. You're, you're paying um, for your location, you're experience, paying for the reputation, which I mean, Hey, you're there. They're getting it. People are lining up, and so who am I to say don't charge me forty bucks for two two meals? You know. Oh, believe me, no one's. Yeah, they could probably charge fifty, and they're still gonna get the same line. So, Absolutely, hey, nothing wrong with that. Keep it up. You know, raise prices Inflation. or don't. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is my. I've been there multiple times. Um, this was my best experience there. Okay. And Good. just because every other time there's been a long line, had to essentially wait for someone to get up to go to a different table. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the main cause of that line right. is that they are trying to make it so everyone that comes in can grab a table. I think that the line can be a little bit self-manufactured. Absolutely. Because I mean, there was plenty of tables today and they were, still kept that line going. Like we had we had two tables. That, so after the those initial two people that were next to us left, they were empty for about 10 minutes. Yeah. So I think that, you know, and there's no reason to have that line at that point, because even when we got up and there was a line, there were six, six open, seven open tables throughout the entire yeah. restaurant. I think and they could just keep it a slow, steady pace, probably for the kitchen, for, you know, for the staff that's cleaning up everything too. They do do a really good job of cleaning the tables up right after you yeah, and, they do. and setting up for the next but party. But there's also something to be said about appearances, you know, absolutely. Like, 
you, you hear all of this stuff about, oh, it's the number one place. And then you show up at like prime breakfast time and there's no line. It's like, I thought it was the number one place. Yeah. So, you know, you keep that line, you know, nice and long, just constantly. You keep that reputation moving. and being the number exactly. one spot. Yeah. yeah. Because there was honestly, I mean, I'm not going to start dogging companies just because I want to, but I mean, they could have sat people. You know, oh, absolutely. I mean, they easily could have gotten those people through and there shouldn't have been a line. Yeah. At least at that point. The couple know, so. after us had a had a baby in a carriage and they were off on their own trying to fend for themselves to find a table that worked for them. So, so why did we get the special treatment? Eh, we're better looking. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, I mean, um, obviously. So my rating, this is my best experience there. Yeah, so what do you give it? Three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly the worst piece of chicken I've had in the city and the worst biscuit. That's fantastic. And, and I can't I can't go any higher than that for That's great. phenomenal sausage gravy. Yeah. And a good poached egg because the the whole meal should be should be really good. Now had that been That's good. I that, mean that, I, that had is, that been a decent biscuit and an average piece of chicken for, for this area, that would have been all right, great. A six and a half, seven. But it wasn't. No. So and it's I a, love, it's a solid three and a half. I love that you came in like well below five. That's <laughs> that's fantastic. I was waiting for that rating. I was <laughs> waiting for it. And that's, uh, that's I didn't think it was going to be that low, even though I knew how you felt about it in general. Even before we went, I didn't think it was going to be that low. I love that you just gave it. A oh, three when and I half, like something, I like it. When I don't, I don't. Yeah. Hey, I I can't stray away from my uh from my rating. I think the food was great. So, um, I have nothing bad to say. We got about two the food. very different meals. Yeah, we did. Very, very different. Maybe meals. we do another one and you get something similar to what I got and I get what yeah, you got. Give me about three months to recover from that. Maybe that I'm just getting the one. wrong stuff when I go. Well, I mean, it, uh, the main thing is with that is y- you didn't pick your meal. No, I didn't. That was so, their number one meal. You know, you're kind of you're kind of leaving it up to them and leaving it up to chance. Like, yeah. yeah, obviously you wouldn't get that again. You know, so I mean, if it's um, me. I'm renaming the place Bad Biscuit Love because that was a bad biscuit. Well, not everybody agrees with you, Craig. <laughs> Facts. There's a lot, a lot of people that disagree with you. Um, my biscuit was great, so you just got a bad biscuit. I had a great apple juice. It was a great apple juice. So, uh, anything else to say about your favorite breakfast place in the uh, in the city? Um. Just because I absolutely think it's the worst place in Nashville, I think that you should still give it a try. Um, Chris had a great experience. You know, make make the decision for yourself. I did. Um, Obviously, to make that experience better, time it the best way that you possibly can. If you're coming to town to visit and doing, you know, the the tourist thing, I mean, obviously, you know, it's going to be a little bit tougher. If you live here, pick the right day, pick the right time, and it's completely fine. Midweek days before 9, you should have no problem around that. You're waiting in line pretty much any of the breakfast places in the area are that those exact same times. So mm-hmm. yeah, if you can do it then awesome, do it then. If not, you're going to have a little bit of a line, even if it's one of those self manufactured lines. Also a good tip. If you're in line at milk and honey or over at biscuit love and you have a group of people in town and you want to get pictures at the wings, leave one person to hold your line for you. Everyone else go get photos. Cause you're going to wait in line there too. And then have yeah. that person that way to go over with some of those people and get a photo after that, there was while someone bigger, else saves the spot. There was a bigger line at the wings after we left than, was there? There, than there was getting into Biscuit Love. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, whatever. So, you it, good? I'm good. If you all got any other places uh, that you see on those lists that we haven't hit yet, um, hit us up. And, Especially uh, if and tell us some, where you want us to go. If it has some form of chicken that Craig could absolutely tear into again, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. I'd love to see another three and a half out of him. That was great. <laughs> I mean, just based off of the ratings that you've given in past episodes to other places where you're at like eights and nines and I've been in like the six, seven range, the fact that you gave somebody a three and a half, that's fantastic. You absolutely hate this place. I felt bad going any lower. (laughs) I I feel like a three and a half is like a zero. Yeah, it is. So I think anything under a five is sending a pretty strong message. So (laughs) good job. All right, man. Uh, let's wrap this up. So, uh, that was it. That was the, for me, the long awaited, uh, biscuit love episode. So, um, thanks for listening and, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. See you next week. Download our episodes on Spotify or Apple podcasts, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at Nashville scoop podcast. I'm at the Nashville realtor and Craig is at real estate rockstar.